All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the No Guts, No Galaxy podcast number 150. We are your hosts, Phil and Darren. Today is November 9th, 2016, and I'd like to say good evening, Mama Bear. How are you doing, man? I'm doing very well. Good evening to yourself, and congratulations on 150. Dude, five years. Again, I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to all of our listeners, viewers, supporters, everybody out there that has been with us from the start or maybe you're new whatever you guys are amazing thank you guys for first off i guess let's just be honest putting up with me because you just want to hear darren's voice putting up for everything yeah putting up with everything for five years so it's 5 150 yes that's what it is 5 150 there it is so do you have your um i guess your 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 gallon Is is it here is it I mean, should we compare size coffee cup? No, that's not. I don't think uh, yeah. comparing sizes is going to work out though. well for you. I mean, it is a pretty Banff mug. So yeah, anyways, yeah. guys, what so is going on? we've got our coffee, we've got our podcast, and uh, we're happy. This we're, we're in a good space here. Um, yeah, so tonight, just to let everybody know, I know there was some brief talk of a town hall earlier in the week or, or late last week. Um, this is just going to be a podcast, and it's not just, but it's going to be a podcast. It's not going to be a town hall. The reason being is that we are going to save the town hall for immediately following Metcon because, well, that's when there's going to be a ton of stuff to talk about. Um, we may touch on some of it tonight. I don't know. That's going to be up to our guest. Um, but probably a lot of news is going to be coming out around Metcon, and then we're going to have all kinds of stuff to talk about post Metcon which will be the next round table where you'll have a lot of questions as far as what is announced at Metcon as well, I'm sure. So we're going to chill. Basically, on the day following such, what do you want to call it, an intense day for many people around the world. Yeah, just a um, bit. We just didn't feel like being intense, and we want to chill out, hang out, and uh, basically just be casual, have fun. Yeah, drinking. Uh, My drink of choice is coffee. You can all drink whatever you want. I know there's lots of people drinking out there. That's okay. Just be safe. Um, so we are just going to hang out, talk MWO and, uh, maybe get a little bit into MechCon, which brings us to our guest. Of course, our guest tonight is Russ Bullock, president of Piranha Games, developers of MechWarrior Online. Happy Wednesday to you, Russ. How are you doing? Hey, thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, happy to be a part of this. You guys just, um. Yeah, do your thing. I like uh, I like watching you guys do your thing. Um, I think it made sense to join you guys and maybe just talk. I mean, I know there's, you know, so much is around MechCon. I'd love to share, you know, maybe I can go into some details about MechCon and just kind of explain it firsthand rather than just, you know, read it off the website. Obviously, that's taken up <clears throat> a lot of our time. The preparation work is almost complete. Um, really excited about it. Yeah, I mean, that's we definitely will get into MechCon, and that is another reason why we're kind of taking it easy tonight. Everybody's been on super crunch mode, um, a lot of last minute, you know, well, you, just everything, basically. It's funny because, like, of course, like, everyone's like, well, what's there to talk about? And or, or you know, oh, you don't want to spoil anything, obviously, you know, yeah. I mean, and that that's the thing, like, for me, it's like, Yes. Uh, anyways, I'm super excited about MechCon, uh, and it was really but cool. Before, okay, go, go ahead. No, I was gonna. Well, well, just hold off before we get into MechCon. I want to. Talk no, I was about gonna say Randall questions. Bills. It was cool talking to him, uh, oh, hearing yeah. about you know BattleTech in the future. Uh, on you know, Russ, we had uh, Randall on our last podcast, and uh, he was talking a lot about the future of the the tabletop and and new stuff coming out, as well as the novels. Um, and we were just talking about how, of course, it's just continuing to be a great era for Battletech and MechWarrior fans. So we're going to continue having Randall on on a regular basis. But what I was hoping to talk about is just kind of uh, MechWarrior right now. You're Phil, you're doing some interesting stuff with your videos that you're uploading to YouTube and your streams and so forth. Playing some mechs that you haven't played before. The reason right. I'm bringing up the whole mech choice thing is because when we were picking a mech for to represent basically you tonight, uh, Russ... I was saying, well, of course, pick a dragon. Uh, but Phil had another, you know, he had a different thing to say. He said, that's not your favorite mech anymore. Oh, he's a, su- no, he's, he's been <laughs> a summoner the, fan. What the hell though? Yeah. Like I thought it was all dragon for life. It's not dragons for life. You're, you're a summoner guy now. Uh, he went, he you went know, clans. It's kind of, 
yeah, it's kind of 50-50. I mean, I don't know. It's Honestly, there's a few others. If you're going to say I'm a summoner guy, it's probably fair to say I'm a dragon guy and probably even a couple Respect 4G. Others. I know you're a 4G fan. The classics. Yeah, I've always liked the Centurion, too, quite a bit. So, I, I mean, obviously, I, I play quite a bit of 50 tonners and, and in and around that range, 50 to 70, I guess, is kind of where I like to fall in. Well, you know... Uh... I have been playing. Oh, okay, to be fair, so was it today? Well, you've been in assaults. That's what's been like. First of all, you've been playing assaults, and then what was it the other day? It was just like against everything I knew about your play style. Well, so you you've been venturing out and experimenting. I, with I you. have been, you know, it was brought to my attention via YouTube comment. Yes, YouTube comments. I read them. I'm the one who reads them, and I read them too. I just don't respond. <laughs> someone was like, you know. I really like your content, but you're always in freaking mediums or heavies. And, you know, instead of being like, whatever, you know, you don't know me. I was like, you know, maybe I should. So anyways, I, like I started doing the mech alphabet thing where like I started with A and I, I would just do I lights or whatever. I thought stuck on C forever and right? never leave yeah. C. <laughs> right. But then, you know, like you can only, so anyways, I was like, well, let's play assaults. Let's, let's find. And then I started doing like just make it work mech warrior sort of thing and so i was playing gargoyles and have dude i had a fun time leveling the gargoyles like that and funny enough like i noticed i was pulling some like you know on average eight nine hundred damage matches one like once you found a setup or setups at work um you know and same thing <laughs> i was rolling around with the bear I, I did two days of kodiaks just and then you know i think it was yesterday i was totally motivated by i want to give a quick shout out to uh uh Tara Bader. um and he did the a1 the catapult a1 video of you know how to learn oh yeah aggressively and, learn <laughs> yeah it's so i was like i did finally watch it yes. yeah so i was i totally busted out the the mad dog and i love that man first, i love seeing people first match the dude. Lerms. <laughs> dude first match it was like but see and, and that's the thing is like it, i also did it sort of like i guess instructional of like right not only you know our alarms can be effective but this is how i use them and this is how i feel like they can be very very effective one doing damage but two you know the, the oh my god i'm getting sh you know shaken around but it's the close range you know i mean literally like within two to four hundred meters of you being right there um and uh you know i think i i, I did a good job so no I, I just been enjoying going in there and saying you know what I may not have a good match, may not have two or three or four, but we're going to keep at it. We're going to find something that works. And uh, it's been quite enjoyable. And of course, you know, when I epic fail, uh, it's always, uh, you know, it's always good too. So, yeah. Well, okay. So now you're, you're, you're going through the letters K and then next in the alphabet, obviously. Well, I, I've just sort of, I, I'm not even doing the alphabet anymore. Oh, okay. I, I'm well, just like, I'm bouncing around. The coming out. So yes. it would have been perfect for, for now. The linebacker, I think there's a uh, misconception out there, the linebacker being bigger than it actually is. It's a 65-ton mech. Are you looking forward to that? What do you think of the linebacker? So it's shorter than the Hellbringer and the Cauldron Born. Um, it's a squat little dude, it's, yeah. It's, it is squat, uh, and you can't really tell by like the few images, and you guys will get images soon, and even a sneak peek. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle it just like I did the last one. I am... Um, where, you know, um, I mean, spiral face, shoot each other with stock builds and laugh and all that fun stuff. But um, here's the thing. I think this is a good analogy to put it in perspective. I think it'll be like an ice ferret for the 65 tonners compared to the others. It has less pod space, but it has the 100, you know, like 100 kph um, and the agility factor. So will that agility factor with some decently high mounted hard points in the torso... Uh, make up for the fact of it's not bringing everything that the Hellbringer and Cauldron Morn can. And I guess that's the real question. Uh, does it have jump jets, um, but neither do the others. Um, does it have ECM? And, you know, I mean, Ice Ferret, I know on um, like 1v1s, I think it was, was an MRBC or, I totally correct me if I'm wrong here, but there was a 1v1 tournament or whatever. They I think they didn't let people use the Ice yeah, it was because, affiliated with uh, MRBC, but I can't remember the name. But, but yeah. <laughs> because it was like OP, it was like just demolishing all mechs. Um, yeah. 
yeah. So I don't know. I don't know uh, as far as performance. I think it'll perform well because mobility. So I'm looking forward to that uh, aspect. Um, it looks well. It's like a combination to me of like a Kit Fox, and I don't know, like a. I like the look of it. Now, first of all, you know, obviously I've stated a few times I played linebacker in football, high school football. Love the position. And it is, you know, we had to get in that squat little position, so it's it's appropriate to the name. Um, but I like the look. It's, you know, obviously I'm inner sphere, so it will, mine will be salvaged. But uh, I think it's going to be a really fun mech. What's and up with I've you been, loving ugly mechs? You know, Sidestrafe says that too. He thinks I like <laughs> ugly vehicles. And like the Bushwhacker, man. I'm drooling over that right now. I'm looking at that picture. That's not ugly, though. That's... We'll see. I don't think so either. But a lot of people think it's utilitarian, so it's not like all sexy, mm -hmm. like maybe a Timberwolf or whatever. Russ, what of the uh, upcoming mechs? Obviously, we just announced the Assassin um, Supernova before that. Which, by the way, I'm loving the look of the Assassin. Oh, it yeah. is. I well, that yeah, that brings up an interesting, I guess, subject. You know, because lately, and we go through this probably, oh, I don't know, once a year or so. You know, the player base kind of gets fatigued as far as saying, uh, you know, why are you making just releasing mech packs? We want to see a lot of features. So I, I think it's worthwhile to kind of go over that process again, maybe, and kind of remind everybody exactly, you know, why we do things the way we do. Um, the first one's a really short answer that everyone understands already, I think, or just another reminder is that um, there are different teams, right? I mean, making mechs and mech packs. Uh, does not impede and slow down feature development. And I think especially when it becomes a little more prevalent, this sort of feeling when, I guess, when we're kind of stockpiling some features or we're working on some larger features that take a little bit longer, sometimes we go through periods where we have really big patches full of content for a number of months, and then we go through maybe like a two or three month stretch where it starts getting kind of lean and light because we're working on some bigger objects that need that are going to be released and take a little longer and so that's kind of what we've been going through here since the fall early fall uh maybe even like late summer uh, as we push towards metcon a we're working on some larger features but b also we're kind of stockpiling them for that around that time period so the patches have been a little bit lighter but we continue to release the mech pack, so some of that anxiety shows up about, you know, Which, give me more features. Can, can I cut in re really quick that, Russ? It's always surprising, and I guess maybe with you here, let's just, let's just fucking get it out there again. Just, the just so people can hear you say it, even though I've heard you say it, you've said that mech packs are a thing that you guys are going to do pretty much on a monthly basis, and... You shouldn't be surprised every single From month. From here on out, like right? I mean, is, that's that's you guys have pretty much been doing that. And is it that much of a surprise? Can can you just elaborate? Is that your guys' plan? And yeah, well, for I'm gonna avoid just saying yes simply because <laughs> plans can change. However, sure. I guess the way I'd answer that is, um, just finishing off that other thought real quick would be that. So first off, you know, maybe we're in a bit of a feature lull for a moment and therefore people get a little more antsy and they see mech packs being released. And of course, they naturally think, well, just, you know, finish the features. So, yes, I suppose it's true that if we took it's only a little bit true, actually, but maybe it's mildly true that if we took all the people working on the content that we sold and put them on the features, maybe things go a little faster. Although I say that with a lot of doubt in my voice because you know, content can be ready and just waiting on engineers, right? And so you might say, okay, fine. Well, replace all the extra artists that you hired to do content and hire more engineers to make the features go faster. Okay, Th that would probably make the features to get developed faster. Except we'd only be in business for a few months before we shut down. Because, I mean, surprise, surprise, this is a niche game. It's a smaller game. It requires an ongoing source of revenue to you know, fun development, and that is through content. And so, um, and I think with MechWare Online, it's it's a little different than some games. It's almost entirely, I guess I'd call them larger content slash expansion type of items, mech packs and things like that. Whereas other games, they get away with maybe a significantly more smaller um uh, vanity type of items, but generally a game that can get away with doing that more so is is a game that is significantly larger, right? It's just like 
you know, 10, 20, 30 times the, the player base. And so, you know, we have more content type stuff. So, you know, it's just a balance. It's finding it. It's like we have a content team. They focus on content. Their job is to create content that you, the players, want. And if you don't want it, you don't buy it. That's totally fine. But we we try to do our best to find content that you want to buy so that you'll buy it. And therefore, it supports development. And then the feature team, it stays 100% focused on creating features. Uh, and, and they don't get distracted. And so, um, you know, again, like the content does not slow down uh, the feature development. Somebody just asked, uh, why don't you do mech packs to fund content? And, and they're talking about specific mech packs to fund specific uh, content goals. I would argue, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that's basically what happens, right? That's what the, the mech packs and, and the various other consumables or whatever that MC fund the development. And obviously the reason why we're not hearing uh, a, a lot to do with the development tonight is because you're saving stuff for MechCon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fair. I think what the um, listeners probably suggesting is that, say, we put a particular mech pack on sale and say, "Hey, this is to fund," you know, like actually name the feature. So, like, let's say, I don't know, pick something, guys. A new, a new map mode, or a new whatever. Game mode, a new yeah. map, a new game mode. And say, if you're buying this pack, we'll actually fund this particular feature. Well, never say never. Um, <clears throat> As the game gets further along here and just gets, you know, it's already, what, four years post-open beta. So, you know, it's a mature product now. So, I mean, you never know for sure. I mean, we're going to announce a couple features, <clears throat> more than a few, at uh, MechCon. And, you know, one in particular we've talked about before with the skill tree is kind of, in our mind, one of the last, you know, vestiges of the open beta type of placeholder systems. And so maybe that will kind of free us up to think like, okay, now what, you know, early in, well, that, there's a fair comment early in 2017, quite early, even by let's call it January or February. Um, we will be kind of looking for the new direction of like, well, what now, you know, what is the next major step? Is it, I have my own ideas. I think it's going to be really focusing on gameplay in in a sense of, and we'll talk about that at MechCon some, and you'll see that evidence of that at MechCon with some of the announcements. Things like more depth of gameplay, more depth of game modes, game modes, maps, um, and then depth in faction play, and just more um, depth of gameplay. But that's just kind of a thought right now. I mean, our features that we're working on are concluding all right around, you know, in and around MechCon. So, uh, one other con comment I had on that when I was talking about the, um, you know, like feature development and uh, the, uh, you know, content development not really affecting each other. Um, another aspect in there, of course, is people, people have been asking for particular mechs or types, and right now there's kind of a desire for lights. Um, I get it. It's, you will see lights. Um, in fact, I believe the next one we announce is a light mech, or I might have lied. There's one in between, but that one is really special. That one is real. Okay, so there's your first teaser. Wait, the in between uh, one is special? Yeah, because we just announced the Assassin, right? So yes. the Assassin, of course, is a 40 ton mech, so it's pretty close. So, yes. I mean, I think people should be, you know, I'm not, it's not a light. I'm not saying it's a light. Is it but 35? It's, it's pretty close. Or is it 40? I think it's 40. Yeah, yeah. It's 40. So it's a medium mech, but it's in that Sakata yep. range. So it's kind of, we don't have many in that size, so that should be interesting. And uh, then. So that was our uh, November mech. The December mech is something, like I'm not going to tell you, I'm just going to say there's something about it that we've never done before, ever. It's, that's all I can say. So that's about <laughs> right. <laughs> You'll learn a lot about it. Oh. Everyone, in fact, yeah, you guys are going to like that. And then, and then after that, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, there, there is a light next, and it's yeah, one that you guys it's well known. I'm totally it's just so everybody like knows out there. I'm, I'm trying to poke Phil to find out if he knows what Russ is even talking about. So there's plenty of times where I don't even know what's going on, uh, and I love the surprises. Well, as well. I, I talk to Alex all the time, and I'm like, yeah. hey, do you got a uh, work in progress? And I'm like, <laughs> oh man, that looks awesome. I'm digging it. So yeah, yeah. So that's it's the one we were talking about then. Mm, that's the light. Yes. 
Okay, so it's not the one that Russ is referring no. to. It's special. All right. Well, we'll talk about that. But anyway, uh, a lot of cool mechs. I do have a question, Phil. Maybe you know, or Russ. Well, let me somebody... let me just wrap that up. Yes, yes. You did kind of ask specifically about whether it be monthly mech packages. Finish well, your thoughts. Sorry about that. Uh, or no, or just to sort of tell you know people like I, I, every single every single time. It's almost like, oh my God, I can't believe they just announced. Didn't they just announce one? And I'm like, you. I remember when you said we are moving to a monthly. It's one of our, you know, source of revenue. Don't be surprised. And it just, it's always amazing. Look, they're surprised. And yeah, I mean, I there's there's times when I think about, you know, we going back to a format pack system. Um, so that's why I didn't want to say just like definitively that we're we're never right. going to go back to that. That we're going to stay monthly. Um, I guess the reason is, and if I find the right moment, it just felt like when we did the um, the classic mechs um, in the you know, Alpha Lance, etc., it made a lot of sense then. And it kind of swung into that um, and just kind of stayed there because I think initially coming out of those Alpha Lance and this stuff, I didn't want to take the four plus months it would take to concept out an entire pack before we could move into putting them on, you know, pre-order and such so and just the pipeline just started just got so we're just more efficient as a team we're just i mean we're getting those you know a monthly max out plus we're getting lots of other stuff done so it's turned out to be a more efficient pipeline for us for one and um and also it, you know there's there's a lot of people that express you know a lot of i guess positive reaction to the flexibility of the package too i mean there's a lot of people that really like the fact that they can you know they don't have to blow like if they want to get the big mac if it you know let them want to get like an 80 dollar package or something to get the assault and like the other way system worked with this one it doesn't matter if it's a 100 ton mac or 50 ton or they can just buy the 20 dollar package and then maybe add the hero if they want and wherever they see values there's a lot more flexibility in the purchasing situation so it may change and i wouldn't be shocked if it did it went to kind of a different process and went back to the other process but i think the point here is there's always going to be mech packs and content because that's just that's how the game gets funded i mean that in game transactions we're doing our best to add the smaller transactions too um i don't think you know our game can't exist off of just nothing but you know vanity items like a league of legends game does or something because there's so many players um there's always going to be kind of more bigger more serious content to purchase but you know the the decal system was a stab at trying to get smaller transactional type things in the game and um at any rate so there, there's always going to be content and we're always working on features and we're getting really close here um if you just stick with us there's another you know, we're what, less than a month away from really big announcements and really big releases. Well, Absolutely. I, Phil has a question for you, but I just want to, again, remind everybody that the main reason that the other features aren't being discussed right now is because it's being saved for MechCon. And you just got to understand that's the way it works. It's a big event. We want to have big things to announce at the event and so forth. So understand the frustration, but just hang in there. It's, uh, it's you know, just a little over three weeks and you'll be hearing a lot of new news. Uh, Phil, what was your follow-up? Well, it's not even really a follow-up. I guess it's more of just a, a maybe taking a look at it from... I can understand people... Every, like, okay, so last time um, we sat down with you and um, the new designer about... And we had the discussion about, you know, community warfare and what came out of the, you know, roundtable discussion. And I think sometimes, and I, I think it's totally legit, is that, you know, okay, a month goes by, two months goes by... And, you know, they see mech packs like, oh, hey, it's another mech pack. Oh, hey, it's another mech pack, you know, and by the third one. And, and I, you know, that's what I'm sort of reading from Chad. It's not the fact of mech packs. It's more or less like, hey, you know, where is those features? Where are the changes to CW and stuff like that? And, and, the, and then this reference and I can I can understand that aspect of, you know, hey, you know, when we're talking about features and we're talking about content, uh, you know, you're delivering the mechs, cool, but we're really looking, we want the con, you know, we want the features uh, to roll in. When are those going to happen? And I think what's really tough is you guys are a small studio. You know, it does take time. And, you know, is it just relaying like, okay, hey guys, we're not far off, you know, just it's, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Do you have any uh, like comments on that? Well, I mean, 
Not a lot. I, it's, I mean, I, there's one thing I can think of to say, but I mean, it takes, yeah, I mean, first off, I guess I'd answer like that, like this, is saying, if I decided, and this is just the way development works for any studio, and I think ultimately we release our features and feature sets as fast or faster than a lot of studios do, but if I decided to make, you know, a very small change, like let's say I wanted to, okay, maybe that might be a little too small, but like, I don't know, just some little small feature, like let's say even like a change to jump jet thrust. At this point, if I wanted to make that change without really kind of disrupting the process and the QA process to add a lot of risk to the release cycle, then that's a feature that even if we decided not here tonight, that's essentially a December patch feature because, you know, we're only now, well, obviously the November patch is, uh, like a week from yesterday so we're well into the stable process well into final approvals of the build you know the way that the the patch process works so it's way too late and way too risky to disrupt that pipeline right now so that becomes a december feature so people look at that and they say whoa man just the tuning jump jet values that's a five weeks it takes them five weeks to get that done well of course it doesn't take us five weeks it takes us like a few hours, part of a day for someone to come up with the new values and input them into the game. But, you know, online games and whatever your favorite online game is, most of them, your favorite online games probably patch about monthly. We used to do bi-monthly and that's about as quick as it gets out there. Most are about monthly. So you don't bring your servers down and patch for everything. And I think people understand that. So you know, really, that's five weeks just to put that in. So now think of something like uh, a big update to community warfare. And it's not just, you know, like a day's worth of work. Let's say it's about three three months worth of work, roughly. And we started this process in the summer. And so, you know, you might develop for, you know, August, September, and October. And then it's right on the cusp of, you know, all everything's finished, but... At the end of October, you're already about one to two weeks past the cutoff date for the November patch. And then so it goes into December patch. And that's really pretty much kind of what I just described there is really kind of the development process that we just went through with this new um, faction play update phase. So it's really about a three month worth of development work. And that's, you know, and here it comes. It's, it's very close to coming out for release. So that's very standard and I, I suppose yes we could more often just be like it's close it's close we expect it to be out here but we have to be very careful about this things because if our estimates are wrong then we lied or something so we we be as careful as we can and we but i think people also just get frustrated with just like it's close it's it's i'm thinking maybe about two months away or you know just things like that don't really help you you know <laughs> you want yeah. the features not necessarily instant like, oh, gratification is where we live right now but i mean it's not only just the fact that if you have a significant feature it's going to take a month or two or three or whatever but it's also that you have multiple significant features you know like you said we're finally getting to the point where in early next year january or whatever you're going to sit down and go what's next uh it hasn't been that way for a very long time since release so um and and i still know we've talked you know over the years a lot of other possible features and things that can happen and so there's a laundry list it's not like there's just one or two things that need to be get you know people want done at any given time uh there's a dozen there's two dozen whatever um so yeah totally get that you, but anyway. i hope that helps a little bit i mean i know these months they they i don't know if you're, if you're anxiously waiting that it seems to be going by really slow but um you know, I think we've been the, turning around these features in, you know, pretty reasonable time frames, I think. But, you know, based on release schedules, you know, two to three months worth of work might be more than the four to five months before release based on kind of when it gets done and how, you know, the patch cycle and stuff like that. And in this case, you know, with MacCon coming up. But anyhow. I think it's like one of those things uh, next year or, or whenever. It's like whenever there, there's something like this going on, it's like, hey, guys, the next two months is going to be intense, you know. Metcon planning for all that, you know, tournament that, you know, all the things detail. We're going black, no details. See you at Metcon and you're going to be excited, you know, and, and I feel like you're 100% right. Like some people are like, I need to know right now and I need that sort of verification every once in a while just to just to make I don't, you know, and some people are on the other side. Uh, Darren, we, me and you have talked about this patience, right? Like if, if we're told something, 
you know, but then where is that line of like patience of like, yeah, we haven't heard anything for a while, right? But um, well, there's patience and there's and then there's open communication too, so that people that are antsy know at least something's going on. And so it's always you know something we can strive to do better and uh, do more of or whatever. But yeah, I mean, patience is a virtue. There's a reason that's a saying. Um, but speaking of, and and again, you know, the fact that there's a big event coming up, this kind of hushing the news until you know that event makes it a little bit more frustrating we want to hear big things right now um but let's talk about that event um let's get a little bit into metcon obviously that's something that we've been focusing a lot on over the last uh, month or so post uh the regional finals for the tournament um we kind of everybody shifted gears into getting ready for the actual big event the grand uh finals and everything that else else is going on there, uh, Russ. Are you uh, cool with talking a little bit about MetCon? No, I'm yeah, not let's saying do that. You know, go. I'm, just... I'm saying. Sorry, I'm looking forward to it just for the fact of this is, in my knowledge, the first time this has ever happened of this sorts. Like a BattleTech specific it, con or whatever. Right, yeah, and not not just like oh, it's just you know back in the day it was just Activision for MechWare Two. No, this right, is. Right. You know, uh, you know, Piranha Games. This is Catalyst. This is Hairbrain Schemes. I mean, well, let's let's get a little of the, a few of the details out of the way first. Uh, this is MetCon. This is going to be held at the Commodore Ballroom in downtown Vancouver on December third, noon to midnight. It's going to be a twelve-hour event all day. Um, there's going to be lunch, dinner, late snacks, beer, uh, beer. Well, yeah. What's the bar situation? Is there one? I think there's two They're bars everywhere. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a bunch of bars in there. Bars gets, everywhere. I think at least a couple drink tickets with yeah. um, their tickets. So yeah, I mean, first off, you know, for the price or the of the the ticket itself, you get. I think this is put on the website, but it's worth going over. It's you sure. get to access, you get a couple drink tickets, you get like lunch, dinner, and late snack. Um, so there's you're being fed, you got your drinks. Um, you you get your tag and stuff. So you can go in and out. Is my understanding because it's it's like twelve till midnight or is even one a.m. So it's like a yeah yeah it's a good twelve hours in there and it's uh, it's gonna be awesome. So I mean if you're if you're still debating, you should come. Well, here's uh, some I, reasons. Do you want you want to give some reasons why they should come? I think maybe well, we should... sure, sure. I mean, yeah. all this stuff is on the website and such, but it's it's yeah. different to kind of hear it in person. So. Well, okay, let me, first off, no, go ahead, Darren. I've got a list, and I was, what I was hoping is you could interject maybe a okay, little bit okay. on, the, on these topics, stuff that I think is really cool. Uh, also, I want to let everybody know that if you can't make it, and yes, that's a bummer. We want to see everybody, but we understand uh, travel is expensive, et cetera. If you can't make it, the whole event is going to be uh, streamed live on Twitch at uh, Piranha Games, the entire event from beginning to end, multiple cameras, multiple things going on, roving camera. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you can't make it, you still can join us and be there with us. Um, but there's so many things happening that day. It's a very busy 12 hours. I've got the schedule sitting right here next to me, how it's all laid out. But first of all, amazing guests. There's going to be so many people that I've wanted to meet or that I have hung out with and want to uh, hang out with again. Of course, obviously, this is in downtown Vancouver. It's going to be the PGI staff that includes uh, Russ and Brian and Paul and all the devs and so forth. So there will be a lot of Piranha Games people there. If you want to talk to the artist, talk to uh, Sean, the audio guy, whatever, you can talk to them. They're going to be there. They're going to be uh, drinking as well. So maybe you can get some, uh, I don't know, maybe they'll let something slip. Um, of course, there will be Mitch, Mike, and Jordan from Hairbrain Schemes. Um, that's going to be exciting. Randall Bills and the uh, Catalyst Games uh, Labs crew. It's not just Randall. It's the crew. And, and the reason why he's got the crew there is that they're going to be having um, basically, what what is it, throughout the day... Uh, Russ, aren't they going to be playing sessions? Yeah, when they sessions? call their demo team. So they're going to be doing, yeah. they'll have the full setup and doing, you know, Battletech, uh, you know, demo play. You can play tabletop. I mean, <laughs> that's going to be insane. Uh, I don't know if I will be able to get up there and do it myself, but I would love to. Uh, one of these well, you days, mentioned gonna... Hairbrain, so that's, yeah. uh, they're going to have their Battletech game there playable. Um, With the it's latest gonna build. It's going to be the yeah. same. I'm not sure if it's the same demo as Gen Con or if it's slightly Mitch, updated, but either way. Mitch did say that what they're going to try to have something newer potentially, but no guarantee. No guarantee. That. Like if something would come up and it, it wasn't able to happen. But if knowing, something can go wrong. <laughs> but me, no, like knowing Mitch he, and and Jordan, yeah. they're you know, they're going to have something. Well, so. dude, even if it's the same demo, hello, I want to play it. I want to <laughs> play it still. Can I? So we've got uh, Hairbrain, we got Catalyst, we got demos of both of their products. 
Um, you know, of course, we other guests that we have there, uh, George Ledoux, uh, voice actor, uh, Duncan Fisher, he's going to be there. Side Strafe, he's the uh, voice actor. He did the, um, you know, the, 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 what, what am I, the word I'm looking for, Phil? The things. Why Duncan can't I? Wheel? <laughs> Thank you. Command wheel. Simple word. I'm always like, God dang it. Stop telling me what to do, Side Strafe. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have him telling me what to do uh, throughout the day. And then when I play MWO as well. But anyway, he's the, the voice actor for that as well as he's done some other stuff with MWO. Uh, Twitch streamers, uh, you know them out there in the community. Trainzy TV will be there. Crazy Hippie will be there. Of course, the shoutcasters for the main event, Bandit B17 and MDM00. And then this is something that actually I know you're going to be, of course, excited about, Phil. But I'm also very excited about because of how it's b potentially going to come down, which is the artist package that we're going to have there. Obviously, we have Alex Iglesias, uh, the PGI concept artist, one of the, if not the best, mech artist of uh, our time um but then right up with him you know a close second if not for uh, tons of people i know he's their favorite uh, mech artist shimmering sword who's done a lot of work for um uh, catalyst and uh for us he's done stuff for us for ngng since the beginning uh shimmering sword is an, another awesome again you take alex and shimmy side by side the two best mech artists we have today and then this is a cool one and this is just a rumor so i don't know if it's been solidified or confirmed but i was told that it potentially the 90s uh fossa artist mike nielsen is going to be there so we'd be like basically spanning decades of mech artists uh in one location again this is a mech con this isn't just a, a piranha con this is just everything mech I'm so excited uh, for that. So, and also, you a lot of those people you mentioned are going to be doing autographs. So, yes, tons of like autographs. Like Jordan, I know for sure. I think Randall. I think Alex Iglesias will be maybe George. George, sure. so, side straight, bunch of people. Trains, yeah, definitely. Uh, Shimmy will be there. I probably Shimmy will be doing uh, autographs at the same time as Alex, something like that. Um, and then we get the main event, and the, the main event is divided into um, four different sections throughout the day. So three rounds and then the grand fin uh, finals at the end of the night before we uh, hand out the prizes. Um, that's going to be a large chunk of it. Now, of course, while that's going on, there are other things that people can do that will be happening throughout the day. Like we already mentioned, there'll be the uh, the game Catalyst Game Labs Battletech tabletop. There'll be Harebrain's uh, demo they'll be doing. And there will be this is another cool thing. Uh, Russ, maybe you can give us some information on this. The MWO Solaris 1v1. It's a new map. Uh, the website says new map. What does that mean? Can you say anything? Yeah, well, they're going to be, I believe it's four computers all together. So two 1v1 setups. And it's actually the map that's been in the game for a while. One of those new maps. But it's been uh, completed art-wise. So... Um, you know, one of that there was well, it was the one v one map that's that's in the private match system, but it was fully gray block and stuff like that. Right. So it's been it's been decked out with new art, new shiny art, and that's going to be um, there. And then of course that's going to be going live. I think can't remember if that's going to go live in the December patch. I think so. So probably just after MechCon, I think that will go live then. So they'll have the one v one map with the art in it. So yeah, they'll use that map. There'll be two one V one setups and they're going to run that throughout the day. And there's going to, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can, you can show up, um, you know, challenge somebody for a prize and that will probably jump the stream to that. Sometimes people can see that going on too. So that will be really cool. That's kind of a new, I guess, uh, dynamic for the game in a way. Very cool. Now is the one V one map being textured a sign of things to come? Was it specifically done for this event? Are you doing it to see uh, what the interest is in it in the future? Well, I mean, I think um, I think it was done for the event, but like we mentioned earlier, very come early in 2017, we're going to be asking ourselves, what What's now? Next? And I know we've talked about doing a um, Solaris for Mech yep. Online, and that kind of took a back seat to get the um, the skill tree system completed. That you know, the, to get a, get the last kind of you know like a semblance of the open beta out of there and something kind of fully featured. And I think people are going to really like that when I when i show that at metcon um but then you know then it's kind of open again and so we'll be back to that decision point of like okay is this what the players want next well that is going to be a fun time like i said post metcon we're definitely going to have a town hall or a round table or something that is going to involve the uh interaction well, of the community i was going to say there's going to be so much stuff to talk about i yeah. mean we're we're going to try to raid 
uh, the PGI Lounge place to do a podcast. At least we're going to oh, yeah. try. So, well, but that's going to be before. Yes, Macon, before so even there. We're, we're, so, yeah, we're going to be just kind of giving the lowdown on what it's like to be there uh, first person. But I think there's going to be so much to talk about in January, February. Um, from what Russ is going to announce again, I don't know everything. I just know some of it and it's just huge and it's going to be exciting and I can't wait for everybody to find out. I know that's torture. I'm sorry. Um, but it's going to be totally worth it. Um, and then that's when I think we'll, it'll be very fruitful and exciting and, and, and fun again to have a town hall and get those questions about, uh, what Russ is going to announce and whoever else. And then we're, you know, potentially, uh, whenever we're going to do another round table as well. I mean, we're, you know, we've got a lot of stuff for 2017 that yep. we will be scheduling over the next couple of months. No doubt about it. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be so many things at MetCon going on. Like I said, if you can't make it, it will be streamed live all 12 hours on Twitch. Um, and then if, the, if you can't uh, decide if you're on the fence. I think we gave you a lot of compelling reasons to go there. You can well, here's buy a, tickets. Here's still. a couple more, Darren. Yeah. I mean, it, it, okay. First off, there's going to be merchandise for sale, and that's been something that we haven't. We've had a hard time with, obviously, with MWO because we don't have the full merchandising rights. Um, we just have the gaming rights. But this is not MechWar Online merchandise. It's MechCon merchandise. So nice. Um, yeah, there will be some MechCon hat. I saw Tina sporting the hat. Yeah. So there's some merchandise there. Um, so there's also, I think another thing that's really exciting is there's going to be these Q and a sessions, right? So after yeah, throughout the day, right? These are yeah. Like in between the tournaments and the various times there'll be, there'll be a QA session and you might, you might get to show up and specifically ask questions about one of the subjects you care most about. Like maybe it's the concept art, uh, with Alex, maybe it's the, um, you know, more the design team or the level design team or like, I think some of those QAs are still being finalized by us as to, you know, what we're going to have and what, where the interest is, but um, really intimate. I mean, I'm not sure. You might just have like 50 people crowd up and start asking questions, and it's a much more intimate, uh, you know, QA session. I really don't and know for sure. Specific questions. There, there is at least a half a dozen of these QAs. There's uh, some with uh, Catalyst, some with Hairbrain, and then a lot with MWO. Um, so there will be a lot of you know one-on-one -on -one essentially time with the devs to ask specific questions about specific elements of design, whether it be. Uh, you know, actual game modes and, and so forth, or artwork. I've been loving the, uh, we we have taken a break a little bit from some of the devs doing their streams of maybe their artwork or their 3D modeling or whatever, but I've been loving that just because um, I think it sheds so much light on the work and the talent uh, that it takes to do the stuff that uh, you do at PGI. So it's going to be cool. I, I, I love watching and being a part of um these gatherings like when we did the steam launch and you know just being able to sit there and chat with the various devs that you hear about or you talk about um but you don't get to hear it straight from their mouths so it's going to be a good source of information and a lot of fun um again a lot of reasons to go mwomercs.com forward slash metcon it has all the information that we've talked about uh tonight the basically the entire event who's going to be there what we're going to be doing um, tickets, which are still available there. You can go to, like I said, mwmercs.com forward slash Metcon. Um, Russ, what about the grand finals of uh, this tournament? Pretty exciting, right? I mean, I know I've been sitting in on a lot of conversations, rounding up all these people from uh, countries around the world to bring them all into Vancouver. This has been a hell of a process. It's not easy getting these teams here, like just making the arrangements and everything, but it's going to be so many cool people from the community that have been playing the game for so long, uh, finally all in one place. Are you uh, as excited as I am? Yeah, it's been challenging with, um, you know, I think, you know, having the event in Vancouver was, uh, you know, we felt like it was the right decision. I mean, I think a lot of companies, like whether it's Eve that has it in, uh, um has it right there in iceland and so we thought we could have it in vancouver and that's you know for a lot of americans and stuff they don't you know you're not used to traveling like that and so it was a you know we probably could have had more people at the event if we would have thrown it down in san francisco and something like that but i think we're still gonna have probably at least four to five hundred people there we'll see maybe we'll get a lot more ticket sales in the as we approach but that's that's still definitely that's gonna be the largest event yet yeah, I was going to say, that's more um, yeah, than... I'm, uh, I'm pretty hyped about that. Honestly, I wanted to have at least 400. I think we'll at least have that, maybe even closer to 500. And we'll see how many tickets we sell in the last few weeks. Um, so that's awesome. And uh, I don't even know what to say beside that. I just... Uh, I don't know. It's just... 
there's still a lot of prep. Obviously, it's a lot of work to do, but um, I don't know. Does that even answer your question? Just I, I wish I want everybody to come and check it out, and I can't well, wait to get up on stage there and just um, share with you guys, you know, I what know. we've been working on with NWO and what you're going to be playing in the very near future, uh, and everything else. Well, um, I know someone was just asking about uh, uh, notes. Um, I do know that there will be design notes for any um, changes in uh, November's patch. So just a heads up on that as well. Uh, what you just showed us, Russ, is that something that we can just show? Or you, is that... Uh, no, Scott. Okay. Yep. So again, secret stuff. But this is the exciting stuff. This is why I'm totally smiling inside and, and wanting to burst at the seams. They'll get to there's... see it at MechCon. Yeah, and I can I can guarantee you guys you're gonna some of this stuff is just gonna be uh, jaw dropping, but uh, anyway, um, oh well, okay. If people can't make it to Vancouver for MechCon 2016, would you consider a a, a U.S. based city for 2017, well, or is... even you know off the the North American continent? Have you ever considered you know something in Europe or whatever? Have you even given any thought to MechCon 2017? Oh, <laughs> no. And um, you know, obviously for us, like I, the reasons I just mentioned, it would be nice if we established kind of a, a location, you know, like these other ones, Citizen Con and Eve Con, whatever the hell they call them. Yeah, yeah. And they're always, you know, it'd be nice if we could establish it here where the developer is. But we'll see. You know, we'll just reassess everything after the show and, and do the postmortem and decide if that's the best choice or not. So... Early next year will be a good time for people to be around and not only hear what's going to be happening with um, MWO in 2017, but uh, hopefully and potentially be a part of deciding what happens uh, when we reach the what next phase. Um, so, again, I think, you know, we're going to December is going to be an amazing month, a lot of amazing stuff, big news dropping, and then we will be uh, digesting and starting to move into uh, 2017 and all the new things that will be coming and so many things to talk about um, for for all the things that we don't have to talk about tonight um, we're gonna we're gonna have just too much stuff to talk about early in the year so I'm really looking forward to that is there anything else about uh, Metcon specifically uh, Russ that you think we should cover or that we might have missed or just be there or be square well we didn't talk much about the tournament but there's nothing much to say there other than you know these are the best teams in the world and they're gonna have there's going to be some awesome matches. I mean, I guess what I was surprised when I was watching the regionals, um, I think, you know, the, the, the finalists from each region is really good. And I think we're going to have some really legit matches. Um, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be competitive, uh, but either way, someone's going to be the winner. Um, all three teams are coming there to win cash. And, uh, you know, it's speaking of prizes, you know, the, yeah, there's prizes for the uh, Solera stuff too, right? In-game prizes and so forth. I'm, I yeah, I don't have the that. details on that, but um, yeah. that's people could line up all day long, you know, and come and, and do that stuff. So, oh boy, it just bring your skills. Yeah, bring it. Um, it's gonna be. It's just gonna be a great time. I just think it'd be a really great, fun, friendly environment for all of us to just kind of hang out for you know all day and hopefully create something that will, like I say, will become a yearly thing. Well, I think it'll be cool yeah. too because it, it is longer than the you know the Steam launch, and and to be able to have more time on target with you guys, have on have, on target, you know, and then be able to hang out to go, you know, actually Randall Bills and HBS and all that, and yeah, like everybody's going to be there. I'm I'm yeah. looking forward to it just because of just that in itself. Yeah. I mean, um, to be actually a part of sort of like BattleTech history and and. Um, be able to meet a lot exactly, of you guys. Right? So I mean, this is this is we are going to look back. It is BattleTech history. Um, this kind of gathering at this scale. You know what um, I'm wondering is who's going to show up, total decked out cosplay. That's what I'm me. wondering. I can guarantee I am not. I'm going to be uh, comfortable. But uh, yeah, I mean, who knows? What it, remember what we saw? I mean, at uh, the launch party in San Francisco, we one of the saw best tattoos ever. Amazing uh, tattoos, as well as like um, you know, of course, unit jackets and shirts and house. You know, people representing their favorite houses. Now you have all that uh, gear from Hairbrain. We'll have all the gear uh, that's being sold there. Who knows what people are going to be dressing as? But uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be exciting. I always love getting together with this crowd. Um, you know, had a great time at the launch. Had a great time at the Steam launch party, and I know I'll have a great time here. And I love hearing. 
uh, 2017, and, and and hopefully this will become a yearly thing. I think it's totally possible, just considering all the players that are happening right now. Like I said, it's a great time to be a BattleTech Mech Warrior fan with Catalyst, with Hairbrain, and of course with PGI. Um, Russ was touching on the the tournament itself. Um, you know, like you said, it's going to be amazing gameplay. I had, I was involved as a as a referee in the the qualifiers and the regional finals. Finals got to interact with a lot of the teams. Um, was right there through all the matches with Ben and MDM watching them, and I had legitimately such a fun time with the whole process. Now. You know, obviously, people had beefs with certain aspects of the tournament, but I think overall, um, I was very impressed with just the the uh, the way the teams handled themselves, the quality of oh, the play, re- regardless of the regional finals. Regardless of like any of that, the actual matches were very enjoyable to watch. And, Unbelievable! You know, you know, I know you guys are big on sports, Phil. You like your uh, football, um, soccer, and uh, Russ. You like your I don't know everything. You're you're into the the football and the hockey up there. Um, I'm not, I played a lot of sports when I was younger, but I don't like watching it as much. I love going to see live sports. I'll drink the beer and eat the crappy food. But I friggin' loved watching the, especially, I mean, I, I love the qualifiers, a lot of great matches in there and crazy ones. But especially when it got down to the regional finals, that was as good as any sport to me. Like I was on the edge of my seat, you know, just the, the, the level of the gameplay, you know, is insane. Something I will never achieve. And that's what I love about it. It is a skill based, uh, activity sport whatever you want to call it e-sport um i had so much fun and i'm just looking forward to having more of that feeling the the energy the excitement um and the adrenaline pumping through us on uh, so you're still on, on the edge day. about uh, poutine aren't you i don't see myself eating it um it just seems like too much to me but uh, well, i'll try it dude, sure. potatoes <laughs> cheese gravy the, yeah i know man it sounds american i don't know why i wouldn't be into it but sounds uh, like right up our alley like Russ, are you a poutine fan? Yeah, I mean, I don't like seek it out, but if it's there and someone's done it up right, I mean, it's pretty damn good. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's going to be, and the food, you know, the steam launch party was amazing. It was just a party uh, of all parties, and I can only imagine this could be better. So, I am excited about that. Is this anything we're wanting to share w- with uh, the stream, or are you guys just. Uh, no. We're just teasing You're just torturing. And taunting. Yeah, yeah, that's the um, December that's a special mech? mech that, like, what? no one knows what the fuck. They're going to be like, what the fuck? I'm so sorry, guys. That we can... Russ has linked two pictures that I I would kill to show you. Um, the only takeaway that, that I can give you is that there's just so much that's coming out that you're going to be happy about and excited about. Big changes, uh, big plans. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, so, thanks for everybody for playing, and um, can't wait till MechCon. Can't wait to uh, first off give you a patch next week, some good stuff in it, and then of course, really, really great stuff coming in December and MechCon and everything. I'm still well, just looking at this, I'm looking at the Mech porn. <laughs> it's hard not to look. Both images are making me drool. But anyway, I'll stop being cruel. Um, that I is pretty beat up. Is there any... yeah, I know, right? Oh, good time. So, is there anything else we want to cover? Uh, Phil, is there anything you can think of before we say goodbye and get dinner? <laughs> no. Uh, I better I just... see a spike in Metcon ticket sales. Let's go. Right, right now, see all MWO... you there. Honestly, I have such a good time at these yeah. things. I, 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 the more you guys I can meet, the better. Absolutely. Um, it is, you know, all the... Us Mech Warrior Battletech fans, we are somewhat polarized, like maybe the country in in some aspects, our country anyway. Um, and, and, but we can all come together at these events, and we always do. It's fun to have some drinks, um, whether you're a Clanner or Inner Sphere, or uh, you and your rum you know, and cokes. If you like the the, the jihad uh, era, whatever. What are you saying about rum and cokes? I was I'm not just, drinking any. I was rum just, and I, was just I was just remembering Darren was like, God, these things are so damn good. I'm like. Dude, how, I, which one are you on? I don't know, like five. I'm like, oh my god, like, and not even an hour. You, oh, by the way, Phil, did you see uh, my daughter? She actually uh, drew my new uh, logo, my new icon. No, I didn't. That is me. That's, that's yeah, you. Yeah, I forgot to point it out last week. Um, that is my new, my new logo. Nice, I like it. Yeah, pretty accurate, huh? It is very accurate. Um, but anyway, uh, 
Yeah, good times. I, I hope to see as many Zoof right there. Zoof's going to be there. Um, we you know. will uh, we will be getting there, uh, me and you and a few others will be getting there a few days early. And I think maybe on Friday, uh, you know, we'll probably go out to dinner or whatever, but we'll let people know. So if you guys are well, in the I area and hang out when we're going to do the podcast, right? Yeah, I mean, and like I said, we'll, we'll let you guys know. We'll Twitter, Facebook, whatever. We'll be like, hey, you know, we'll be at said, said you know, restaurant if you guys want to meet us there or whatever. Um, I do know that they have some really good food. Uh, we discovered this last time and really good beer. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Get to hang out with all of you guys and anytime I can do that. And of course, get to hang out with Darren, even though, you know, five years. It's It's been a long distance relationship. It's always nice when <laughs> we can be in been, person. But you we've know. been able to maintain it. It's right. Been a long you know, like it takes a lot that. of work. That's a, a relationship takes a lot of work. I don't know. Uh, BB Wolf, I was I was just reminded we'll be there. She'll be uh, I think BB is hosting the one V one section like she did the matches last year at the uh, Steam launch party. So again, just over and over so many people making it uh from different countries i've been talking to a lot of jay-z was in chat if he's not still in there uh of course he's on uh the 228 team that, that's making it i just can't believe how many people are going to be there i'm so excited finally get to meet george all the artists that are involved uh you know youtubers and streamers that are you know have been loyal and playing our content for a long time i'm excited and the players all the people in the community i love that that you know that moment when everybody comes in the front door and it's just like uh, mech heaven. So looking forward to seeing you all there. If there's nothing else uh, for us to say. Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Russ, it just want to say thank you again for uh, coming on the podcast. And, and obviously we're super looking forward. Uh, Can't well, wait, man. I, you know, I'm looking forward to MetCon. I'm looking forward to, you know, things that we were talking about earlier. And of course, the, you know, what you were showing us and, and so forth. But uh, yeah, just want to say thank you to everyone out there and uh, thank you guys. By the way, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to, get, forget to click that follow button. It is above now. Twitch changed. And uh, of course, don't uh, you know forget to uh, check out all of our links down below as well. But uh, yeah, Russ, thank you again for taking the time out of your day. And uh, Darren? Yeah, Russ, thank you. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Yeah, guys. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. All right, be sure to check out our website at nogutsnogalaxy.net. Check us out on Twitch at NGNGTV. Check us out on YouTube at No Guts No Galaxy TV. Twitter at No Guts No Galaxy. Facebook at No Guts No Galaxy Podcast. SoundCloud at No Guts No Galaxy. And for all the latest and greatest in mech porn t-shirts, be sure to check out nogutsnogalaxystore.com. Speaking of mech porn, I'd like to give mm -hmm. a quick shout out to all of our viewers on Twitch. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much for the support. Yeah, and, thanks, guys. Uh, you know, it's been a pleasure serving you hot, fresh mech porn on a daily basis. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, a uh, shout out to all of our listeners and our viewers, our uh, subscribers and our patrons. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Couldn't do it without you. And this was your local No Guts, No Galaxy Mechware podcast signing off for tonight. This is Phil. And this is Darren. Until next time, mech warriors. And totally didn't get it. Oh. <laughs>